Superman believes Lex Luthor is an enemy of the Justice League, even though he saved the day in Forever Evil. What will he do if others begin to agree with him that Lex could be a problem? <sighs> hmm? Welcome to the Complete Story Series, where I take trade paperbacks and single issues and I break them down into digestible bites to help you understand and recap your favorite storylines before I add some crazy music and weird voices to dramatically read it back to you. All alterations of the panel, text, and images are to prevent copyright problems and all art is owned by its respective companies. Now before we can start this storyline, I need to catch you up in case this is your first video. In this world, there was a Superman and there was a Lois Lane. They were the New 52 Superman and Lois Lane. But at the end of the New 52 marked books, that Superman died. And shortly after after the beginning of DC Rebirth, that Lois Lane also died. But don't worry, this world does have a Superman as the pre-crisis Clark Kent and his wife Lois Lane have arrived on this world with their son John. He's attempted to become the new Superman taking the place of the old Superman except he's run into a slight problem. Lex Luthor, who is known as a hero in this world, decided that it was time for him to be Superman. The two of them battled it out in our previous storyline until Doomsday interrupted them and then they separated, with Superman deciding that he wasn't quite sure if he could trust Lex. Lex, and Lex deciding he didn't know who the new Superman was. In the middle of all of this, we have another Clark Kent that has showed up, and we're gonna call him Mysterio Clark. So there you go. We have pre-crisis Superman, pre-crisis Lois Lane, their son John, we have Lex Luthor trying to be a hero, and we have Mysterio Clark Kent. Now that that confusion is somewhat sorted out, let's begin our story. In Earth's final hour, destruction and war will be the last the planet sees. By the time Earth's forces fight back, it'll already be too late, and the forces of evil will be led by the Annihilator wearing a red cape. This is Earth's future, unless the Godslayer, Lakal and Zaid don't stop it. Over in the Amazon, Clark and his son John begin to investigate a strange occurrence. Earlier in our storyline, a building went missing out of Metropolis, and as Clark pushes away the leaves, John looks at the giant building asking how did it even get here. Clark tells him that that's what they're here to check out. Whoever did it was powerful enough to send it halfway across the world. John then asks what are they going to do with it, and Clark tells him that they're going to leave it here for now until they can find a way to bring it back to Metropolis in one piece. Meanwhile, over in Metropolis, Lois arrives at Lex's office when this world's Mysterio Clark shows up to drop off some papers. Mysterio Clark asks what she's doing here, and Lois tells him that she's here to do an interview with Lex, and Mysterio Clark tells her to just be careful. He is their boss since Lex Luthor owns the Daily Planet. A few moments later, Lex walks out of his lab and tells Lois that he's ready. As they walk into his lab, she looks around to see the Superman power suit and several monitors that are displaying Mysterio Clark on them, showing that Lex also doesn't believe that this Mysterio Clark is a true individual. Lex turns off those monitors and Lois begins to feel that he has done something because he's hiding it. As the interview starts, she wastes no time and asks Lex directly. Why is it that he wants to be known as the new Superman? Lex tells her the truth is that the world will always need a Superman. However, he feels that it is time for a man to take that role, rather than a being that appeared out of nowhere. Lois asks him, why don't you just accept the fact that Superman could be here to protect you and contribute to the Earth's well-being? That isn't fact, but mere speculation. And also, Superman has yet to explain where he came from or what his goals are. He then turns to the container of the power suit and tells Lois that he would like to show her something. She notices the small box floating next to the suit, and the suit begins to power up and fire a blast into a giant cement block. The block then begins to get smaller and smaller, and Lois begins to ask what's happening. Lex tells her that he just transported it via something called a boom tube. Lois looks back and realizes what that cube is. It's a mother box. Suddenly there's a loud boom and the walls of the lab is blown away. Lois and Lex are pulled out of the hole, but as Lois catches herself, she calls out to Clark. Mysterio Clark runs out stating that he's here, but Lois begins to think to herself, that's the wrong Clark. She needs hers. While falling, Lex calls for his suit and as he gears up, he tells everyone that he doesn't know who did that, but it's time for war. Mysterio Clark says that things are probably about to get a bit nasty, so he should probably call him. Lex then tells the two of them to get to the ground level before he can even finish his sentence though, he's blasted away. He calls out, whoever you are, come out and fight me like a man. Lacall appears behind Lex, tackling him down, stating, it's not a lack of guts, it's called tactics. Not far off, Clark and John fly down to see what's going on, and just as Clark sets John down, Zayd rockets in, punching Clark and throwing him into a nearby building. Back at Lex's lab, Lacall beats down on Lex, telling him, I know what you are. I know the throne that you will inherit. You may call me the call, the God Slayer, and I will stop the return of another dark side. I am here to sentence Lex Luthor to death. 
Clark and Zayd fly through the city, punching and beating on each other. But through the struggle, Zayd manages to get his hands around Clark's neck, and he begins to squeeze. Clark begins hitting Zayd's arm, trying his best to break it, move it, make him loosen his grip. And he thinks to himself that this would normally have loosened most people's grips, but it's not working on Zayd. John watches as his dad and Zayd continue their battle, and he thinks how he knows he shouldn't get involved, but he can't just sit here while his dad gets beat up. Back at the tower, Lacall tells Lex, I have seen your future. I am here to stop you before you will commit to those crimes. As the call swings, a shield forms around Lex's head, and Lex says, From what I'm hearing, all this sounds very delusional. Lex then smacks the call away, stating, It's also a delusional thing that you could ever win. A laser pops out of Lex's power suit, and Lacall says that he's going to fire his blasters at a 42 degree angle. As the lasers go off, Lacall fades away. Lois and Mysterio Clark come out on the rooftop to see what's going on. But as Lex tells them that they should be inside, Lacall appears slashing into Lex's back. Over with the true and proper Clark, Zade continues to try and choke him out. So Clark kicks him away! and he looks over to see Lex in trouble. But as he's trying to see what's going on over there, he begins to feel like his vision isn't as clear as it should be. Zade gets back up and he charges towards Clark. So Clark fires his heat vision. Zade continues walking through the blast, stating, that's not very hot, but this is what happens when you do your thing. Then there's a sudden rumble off of the distance as Zade looks back to see a semi truck crashing through the wall, knocking him over. Clark gets up thinking that he should thank whoever that is, and then he realizes it could only be one person. John jumps out of the truck stating, it was a good thing you taught me how to drive the tractor. Look, I appreciate your help, but you need to go. As the two fly back to Lex's building, Clark tells John, you're gonna need to stay behind until we figure out these enemies' capabilities. Back over at Lex's building, Lex is trying his best to fight off Lacall, but every time that he attacks, Lacall just dodges as if he knew the attacks were coming. Appearing behind Lacall, Clark tells him, that's enough and he places his hand on his shoulder. Lacall ducks, turns around, stabbing Clark in the shoulder with a kryptonite knife. Lacall then asks Clark, why is it that you're protecting the architect of genocide? Clark asks, if you mean Lex, because as bad as he might be, he hasn't. And then Lacall holds out his hands, telling Clark to watch. Visions of Lex appear, and Lacall explains that Lex will be the one to ascend to Darkseid's throne. While the vision fades, Clark tells him, that is a possible future, and that isn't enough to. But Lacall stops him, stating, this is the future. Lex gets back up, trying to clarify, this is all the babbling of a misguided madman. But before Lex can fire his arm gun, Zade appears slamming his head into an air vent. Clark and Lacall continue to argue, but Lacall pulls out a blaster telling him, if my mission fails, worlds will die. And then he blasts Clark in the face. As Clark falls to his knees, Lacall goes on stating, worlds with families, fathers, mothers, children. Lacall then draws his sword stating, a man who is willing to protect the person who will commit those crimes is just as bad as them. But before he can strike down on Clark, John screams out from the next building, please don't kill him, that's my dad. The beast hesitates and then says the name, Tasai. He puts away his sword, stating that this will be our reprieve. And then him and Zade grab Lex's body and fade away. Lois runs out asking who was that, and Clark tells her they claim to know the future. He even showed me a glimpse of it, but they said that Lex would rise up and be as every bit as bad as Dark Side. The two of them talk about how that could be a possibility, and Mysterio Clark mentions that this might be like having a chance to stop something bad before it could actually happen. What if he's right? What if Lex is a mass murderer in the making? Because if that's the case, they should just let Lex die. Over on the planet of Nadesi, Zade slams Lex's head into a wall asking if it's hard to concentrate. Lex says that it doesn't matter how much they weaken him. He's still smarter than all of them. Lacall tells him that Zade has not yet met an enemy that he couldn't weaken. And now you will be even weaker when we neutralize that power suit. Lex falls to his knees stating, you have the wrong man. Those crimes you speak of, I would never do anything like that. Right here, right now, I am an innocent. Lacall looks down at him and tells him, this is where you're wrong. I've seen the future and it is insured. It was several weeks prior when Lacall returned from another mission. And he decided that it was time for him to stop this carnage and butchery. He had grown old and weary with so many years of bloodshed. After telling their leader, Char, that he was done, all he wanted to do was sit in peace and remember the family that he had once lost. But they gave him one last vision. One of a man who had the power next to Darkseid, and it made him return for one final mission. Lex argues the fact that they can't execute a man that is yet to do anything. And the call says, Every one of my targets has said the same thing, but the future is clear on what will happen. During this, though, Lex plants a cube under the bucket on the outside. Meanwhile, back on Earth, Clark flies back over to the Genta Cron building that was moved to the Amazon. When the call transported Lex away, he exhibited unique forms of energy. Energy that Clark also sensed back at the Gendrochron building. While investigating the inside, Clark 
Clark begins to see that this building was moved away by Lacan, so he wouldn't be able to piece things back together. As Clark looks at one of the broken pods, he sees a marking, and as he pushes it, a portal opens up to the planet Nadesi. Clark thinks to himself whether Lex is actually capable of doing these things. Lex hasn't done them yet, and right now, Clark needs to do what is right, and that means saving Lex. After flying through the portal, Clark begins to scan the planet to locate Lex, and he begins to wonder if those visions were right. What if the best thing to do is turn around and leave Lex here? But once his location is discovered, Clark decides that he needs to come crashing down into the cell to tell him it's time to go home. Lex responds with typical arrogance. It's about damn time. They did something to weaken me and the suit. Clark turns around and pulls off a device that Lacal put onto Lex's suit to dampen his strength. But before they can leave, the walls explode! Zade steps in telling Clark that he's aiding a mass murderer. It makes him just as bad. Both Zade and Lacal charge in and Clark says that until they can show him proof of Lex's wrongdoing, it's hands off. Clark punches Zade away and he flies after Lacan, and then the voices from below shout, Show him! Let him see! Small orbs begin to appear, and Clark seems to think that they're harmless. So Zade grabs a hold of Lex and tells him that they are both going to witness. Lights begin to fill the sky, and then an image of the planet appears, and then images of Darkseid's army ravaging the planet, slaughtering everything in sight. Lacal fought back the army as best as he could, but ultimately he was overrun, and then he appears. Lacal pleads with Darkseid to let his family go. He will do anything! And without saying a word, Darkseid's eyes begin to glow when the blast wraps around Lakal and goes straight towards his family. As the images fade, Lakal states, I am someone who can forever testify to Darkseid's way of terror. And Lex walks the very path right now. Clark tells him, well, I'm sorry for everything that happened, but... And Lex finishes the sentence, I wasn't the one who killed your family. Darkseid was. Lakal turns and tells Zade to go fetch the item. Char steps forward, telling Clark that if he needs to see more proof, they will show him. Moments later, Zade returns with the mother box that Lex had hidden away, and Lakal tells him that this little gift was from his followers on Apocalypse, and it was planted in his cell. Clark asks Lex, why do you have that? And Lakal says, it will be the start of his conquest. To be fair, he has called on the remnants, the last survivors of the worlds destroyed by Darkseid to judge him. Lex shouts that they are all biased, and all at once the remnants say guilty. Char says the people have spoken, the sentence is death. And Clark says, I can't allow that. But Char tells him, you must understand that our laws extend to all worlds. Our visions have always been accurate. Enough of this, it is time for us to leave. Lex tries to tell Clark, but Clark stops him and says, this all squares up with everything that I've ever thought about you, Lex. If what they're saying is true, you are guilty. Everyone watches as Clark grabs Lex and holds him up into the air, telling him, I've seen the future, and you're going to commit universal genocide. Lacal holds out a sword, stating that as a man who has seen Lex for what he really is, I will allow you the honor of executing him. Clark grabs the sword and tells everyone, back on Earth, suspicion of guilt does not equate proof of guilt. A vision is a possible future and not proof. He lets Lex go, and then he snaps the sword, telling everyone, I will not kill Lex Luthor, and neither will you. While the confusion is sitting in, Clark turns to Lex and tells him, get ready. Lex jets off into the air and Clark begins to blast away at Zade. Lacole moves into attack, but Clark punches him back and throws Lex's mother box. Lex begins creating a boom tube, but Char says that Clark is going to be an accessory to mass murder. Before flying up, Clark says that he will not let an innocent man be executed. It's as simple as that. While Clark and Lex fly through the portal, Lacole says that they can disrupt their journey and drop them right where he needs them to be. Inside the portal, Clark asks, how long does it take to return home? Normally, seconds. Something is wrong. A blast shoots its way up through the portal behind the two of them, and suddenly the boom tube starts to fall apart. A light shines and both Clark and Lex are dropped onto an unknown planet. And Clark says that he had no idea that a boom tube could be short-circuited. And Lex tells him he didn't either. He's just going to have to assume that the race is familiar with apocalyptic technology. He tries to create another boom tube, but the circuits have fizzled out. So he decides maybe they just need to get to higher ground. Clark realizes that that's going to be a problem. Just as I'm powered by solar energy from the yellow sun, this world has a red sun and those powers are fading fast. Maybe we should get ready and prepare for Lacal and Zade's arrival. But moments later, an explosion goes off, throwing the two men away. Zade rushes in, throwing Clark to the ground, and Lacal flies in to finish him off. But before the strike can hit, Lex does the unbelievable, doing a self-sacrificing act, jumping in the path of the sword, telling them that if they want to get to Superman, they're gonna have to get through me. 
Meanwhile, back on Earth, Lois is trying to research the disappearance of the Gendrocon building. John looks at her computer screen and says, actually, him and dad found it. The one who put it there is the guy that dad's after. With a knock on the door, Lois goes back to work stating that if it's their lunch, money is on the counter. John runs to the door and as he opens it, Mysterio Clark says, well, 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 this is a surprise. Who might you be? Meanwhile, back on the unknown planet, Lex is firing his laser and Clark tells him to focus on taking out Zade. Lex hits him with a blast and Clark runs up hitting Zade on the back of the head. Lacall jumps into attack, but as he does, Clark runs behind him, grabbing the armlet off of Lacall. While Clark begins to fight back with the blaster from Lacall's weaponry, Lex begins to think about how effective Clark really is. Like, almost as if there was a time when he didn't have powers. With a blast taking down Lacall, Clark and Lex head off into a cave to figure out their next plan of attack. And Lex mentions that he could try the cube now to see if he can get them back home. But Clark tells him even if they do, Lacall will follow. So they're gonna have to settle this fight right now. Meanwhile, back on Earth, Mysterio Clark tells John that he's a friend of Lois's. Is she home? Lois runs to the door telling John to get away and Mysterio Clark says, there's no need to panic. She explains that they're just teaching John not to talk to strangers and he's uh, her cousin's son. Mysterio Clark tells her, oh, I'm sorry for scaring him. I just wanted to stop by and see if there's anything I could do to help with the missing building. Lois tells him that that's nice, but she's helping John with his homework. She'll see Clark back at the office on Monday. She then slams the door shut and as Mysterio Clark walks away, he tells himself, she's lying to me. The question is, why? Back in the Unknown Planet, Clark and Lex came up with the idea to split up. With Clark weakened, there's no way that he could fight off the God Slayer. While Lex and Lacall fight, Clark sneaks up on Zade by throwing his cape over his head. Using the armlet, he begins to beat into Zade's head until he knocks him into a wall. As Lacall raises his knife to Lex's throat, Zade tells him to wait. The Kryptonian could have easily killed him, but he didn't, so they should at least hear him out. Clark tells him that he could just stun them and be done with this, but his commitment from Earth is that everyone, no matter how misguided, deserves to wake up the next morning. He goes on stating that he looked through Lex's records because he was suspicious about his intentions, but he found nothing warranting killing everyone. Clark then tells Lacall that he knows that he's weary from the way he lives his life, killing people before their crimes, but being weary proves how wrong it is. Clark takes off the armlet and says that he pledges that he will never let Lex, or anyone for that matter, get to the point of destroying Earth or any other worlds. And if they want to be sure of that, go Go ahead and look into his future. The call turns away and he holds out an orb. And for a brief moment, he smiles. He turns to Clark, no Superman, and tells him, It has been an honor, Kryptonian. Prepare yourselves. A green light begins to shine and Clark and Lex find themselves back on Earth. And Lex asks, What did Lacall see? Clark tells him, I'm not sure. Your guess is as good as mine. Before leaving, Lex says that at first he thought that this Superman was an imposter, but now he realizes that he is truly Superman. He goes on continuing, that other world's Lex, the one that you're from. He went over the line and that's why you couldn't trust him. Superman tells him though, the only important thing now is that I'm open-minded to judge a man for what he is and not what I feared he would become. Lex extends his arm, fresh start, and Superman shakes his hand stating, fresh start. The two men part their ways, returning back to their normal lives. Back on that planet, Zade asks Lacall, what did he see? With images of Clark stomping Lex, he tells him, Enough to know that I don't have to worry, but he's in for a hell of a journey. The action comic storyline is probably one of my favorite storylines going on right now in comic books. Just in general, this and Detective are two of my favorite stories happening in DC Rebirth, and I hope it is for you as well. Let me know in the comments down below what you think is going to be happening with Lex. Do you think he's going to become Darkseid? Do you think he's going to become Classic Lex? Do you think something's going to happen where he just stays a good guy? I really want to know your opinions. And on top of that, don't forget to subscribe to this channel to stay up to date on what's happening with Superman. And you can always follow me on Twitter and Instagram if you want to chat about these stories. I'll see you next time.